Well, hello there. Sorry we've been away. Life and work happen to just get in the way, so it is what it is. We'll try harder. Today we're going to learn about Belphegor. He's known as one of the seven princes of hell associated with the sin of sloth. He's crept through history, tempting humanity with promises of wealth and ease, and has urged them, urged us, urged them to give into laziness and to pursue inventions that require little effort for great gain, much like making a YouTube video. So if you're a mythology enthusiast or a student of demonology or someone that's just curious about the dark side of folklore, we're going to talk about the legend and lore of Belphegor. And I didn't mean to rhyme that. To look at his impact on culture and why his story remains compelling to this day. So let's do this. So Belphegor is a name that conjures up images of the macabre and mysterious. Curiously, Belphegor didn't start off as a demon. This figure is believed to originate from Baal Pur, or Baal Pior, an ancient deity worshipped by the Moabites. The Moabites, they're a historical people living in the kingdom of Moab, which is modern-day Jordan. Baal Pior is associated with licentiousness and orgies. He's a god of abundance and excess. He was celebrated with festivities that, to say the least, were quite unrestrained. With time, his power shifted and new religions emerged. Figures like Baal Peor began to be seen in a different light. So when Christianity began to spread, the practices of reinterpreting pagan deities as demonic entities became quite prevalent. And that's exactly what happened to Baal Peor, or Belphegor, the indulgent deity of the Moabites transformed in the eyes of Christian demonology into Belphegor. He's a figure that personifies one of the seven deadly sins. His evolution reflects an even broader pattern that we see in history, a pattern of integration and adaption, where cultures reinterpret the symbols and deities of the cultures they supersede or assimilate. It's a fascinating process, honestly, and it shows us how the stories of the past continue to shape and influence the belief and narratives that we carry forward. It's also worth considering when we talk about Belphegor, this origin story, how a god once linked with fruitful abundance became associated with sloth and sin. The transition from Baal, Peor, to Belphegor stands as a stark example of cultural shifts and the impact of these shifts on how we perceive mythology and religious figures. It also sheds light on the complex journey of Belphegor, a transition from ancient deity to a character in the rich tapestry of Christian demonology. So, that being said, let's look at how the ancient text of the Hebrew Bible, where the seed of the story of Belphegor takes root. Within these sacred pages, a tale of human frailty and divine displeasure unfolds, providing a backdrop for the figure of Belphegor that spans centuries. The Hebrew Bible recounts the narrative of the Israelites who, during their sojourn in the desert, came across a group known as the Moabites. The Moabites worshipped a deity named Baal Peor, a being associated not with piety and reverence, but with licentiousness and often, and often orgiastic practices. It was during this tumultuous time, marked by the Israelites' struggle to maintain their covenant with God, that they encountered the seductive lure of Baal Peor. The allure of forbidden worship proved overwhelming for some, leading them astray into acts of idolatry and moral degradation. The Bible starkly portrays these episodes as periods of significant spiritual crisis, emphasizing the tension between the faithfulness to their own God and the enticements of foreign deities. Belphegor, as a concept, grew from these roots. Through the eyes of Christian demonology, he evolved from Baal Peor, shedding his deity status to reemerge as a demon, an epitome of sin and vice. This transformation from a worshipped entity to a feared demon reflects a broader pattern within Christian tradition, where many pagan gods were recast as malevolent figures in a world where only one divine power presided. The biblical references to the worship of Baal Peor mirror the latter depiction of Belphegor, one who embodies excess, tempts with ease, and stands antithetical to the tenets of spiritual purity and devotion to a singular almighty God. It is within this tension where the divine and the profane clash that Belphegor's story begins to take a more recognizable shape, transforming over millennia to become the demon prince that intrigues and repels in equal measure. And as we look into the depths of these ancient texts, we see the transformation of Belphegor from a deity to a demonic being, which is, you know, his fall from grace that parallels the forbidden practices of a bygone people 
and sets the stage for his enduring legacy in myth and religion. In the shadowy hierarchy of the underworld, Belphegor has a seat of dubious honor. Again, esteemed as one of the seven princes of hell, he is associated with a sin that quietly erodes the human spirit, sloth. What is sloth? Well, sloth is more than just laziness. It's viewed in Christian teachings as a sin that engenders a kind of spiritual and emotional apathy. It's the resistance to the joy that comes from spiritual deeds and labor. Belphegor, by association, is the master of this sin, embodying the deep, insidious urge to avoid effort and meaningful pursuit. Maximum effort. Why is Belphegor tied to such an inactive sin? Well, it's said he not only tempts humans to take the path of least resistance, but does so with the promises of great wealth and ingenuity. It's a cunning ploy, offering boundless riches and leisure, tapping into a human's most inner desire for comfort without toil. This clever deception is what makes Belphegor an effective prince of hell, preying on human weakness for corporeal and material satisfaction. Now, how does one picture a figure so devoted to the promotion of idleness? Well, I, I have an idea. It's more like Job of the Hut than anything else. Often, Belphegor's portrayal is as flamboyant as his function, with depictions of him as a grotesque demon, yet these representations can have a more profound underlying message that magnifies the sin he governs. Comfort at any cost, even at the expense of dignity, growth, or virtue. In the tapestry of demonology, the positioning of each figure serves a purpose. Illuminating the complexities of human vices, Belphegor's ascribed status as a prince allows us to reflect on the gravity of slothfulness prodding us to question the allure of effortless gain and the inherent danger as it poses to the human soul. So as we consider Belphegor's place in the infernal royal court, we also confront our inner battles with indolence and the seductive whispers of each without consequence. A cautionary tale as old as time, reminding us that the struggle towards higher aspiration is real. The struggle is real. Imagine a figure shrouded in mystery, whispering ideas so brilliant that they promise to change your life without you lifting a finger. This is the role Belphegor plays in the tales of yore. He's a seducer through invention. Belphegor's allure comes from his cunning ability to tap into our deepest desire for comfort and affluence. In the grand scheme of things, Belphegor is not just any ordinary trickster. He is a mastermind of temptation, selling dreams of wealth and prosperity. He entices us with the notion that we could become the next great inventor or YouTuber or influencer or anyone, someone who stumbles upon a groundbreaking idea that requires minimal effort yet yields maximum reward. This plays brilliantly into the sin of sloth. Sloth in this context isn't just simple laziness, but a profound and harmful type of apathy. It's the wish for gains without the pains. The fantasy of reaping without sowing. Belphegor capitalizes on this by offering the shortcut to success, a rare and irresistible proposal. He is said to present these ingenious ideas in moments where we are most vulnerable to taking the easy path. As with all things too good to be true, there's a catch. Inventions, while they might offer initial excitement and potential for success, often come with unforeseen consequences. The ideas planted by Belphegor, while seemingly perfect, may actually lead individuals down a path of ruin as the pursuit of easy solutions can corrode the value of hard work and perseverance. In many teachings and old tales, it's suggested that Belphegor's influence proves the importance of diligence and skepticism. His deceptions are a reminder that innovation and progress require effort and integrity, not just a quest for quick riches. So whenever you hear that little voice offering a path to easy success, Remember Belphegor. Know that true invention is a product of passion and commitment, not just the allure of effortless success whispered by a demon of sloth. Yeah. How about that, my apples? Throughout history, the image of Belphegor has captured the imaginations of artists and followers alike, morphing through time into a symbol that transcends its mythological beginnings. In depictions dating back to the occult practices of the Middle Ages, Belphegor often emerges as a figure of repulsion portrayed in a manner that's as unsettling as it is deliberate. Many artists have rendered him seated on a throne, but not just any throne. This particular seat is a toilet. It's not just a random choice. It symbolizes the base and vulgar aspects of human nature that Belphegor is said to invoke and revel in. 
the image puts into stark contrast the highs of divine worship with the lows of human vice. When it comes to offerings, the worshipers of Belphegor were believed to engage in rituals that matched the licentious nature of the deity they adored. Phallic symbols played a central role in these ceremonies as a nod to fertility in the deity's associated mythological origins with orgies and unrestrained sexuality. In stark opposition to the more sanitized practices of many other rituals, these ceremonies were unapologetic in their explicitness, perhaps as a defiant celebration of the carnal pleasure that Belphegor himself epitomized. When we dig further into the specifics, some texts recount rituals quite shocking to the modern sensibility with offerings that would be considered more than just taboo. These obscene rites were thought to curry favor with Belphegor, ensuring his goodwill and the fulfillment of desires that aligned with his domain over excess and moral laxity. Exploring Belphegor's iconography and offerings reveals the lasting power of this enigmatic figure. It wasn't just about rebelling against the norms of the day. It's also a powerful statement on human desires, vulnerabilities, and the seductive pull of the vices that we as a society often find ourselves grappling with. In understanding the ways Belphegor has been portrayed and venerated, we gain a deeper insight into the intricate dance between morality, art, and the human condition which is a dance as old as time itself. The figure of Belphegor has left an indelible mark not only in ancient texts and religious lore, but also on the canvas of modern culture. As a testament to his continued relevance, Belphegor's name and persona frequently surface in literature and media, enchanting and terrifying audiences with his complex nature. His presence carries with it the weight of history, yet it endures in contemporary storytelling adding dimensions of temptation and morality that challenge both characters and consumers alike. In the realm of literature, Belphegor has emerged as a symbol of cunning temptation, often serving as a dark muse to characters who grapple with the allure of forbidden knowledge and the pitfalls of easy success. He lurks in the pages of tales that delve into the human psyche, reminding readers of the fine line between ambition and avarice. This powerful projection of Belphegor as a literary device enables authors to explore the depth of human desires and the consequences that come with succumbing to one's basest urges. Belphegor has also found a home in films and television where his corrosive influence can be portrayed with visceral intensity. He makes his appearance felt not in overt displays of horror, but through insidious whispers of power sowing seeds of discord and strife among unsuspecting victims often playing into the narrative of betrayal and mistrust. Beyond fiction, Belphegor is sometimes linked to the month of April, a time of renewal and bloom which contrasts sharply with the darker aspects of his character. While the origins of his association are shrouded in mystery, it adds a layer of intrigue to his persona, painting him as a character of paradoxes both ancient and ever new, a bearer of decay amidst rebirth. In today's world, the figure of Belphegor has also been co-opted as a symbol of critique against the capitalist system, consumer culture, and the incessant pursuit of wealth and luxury. This adaptation of the demon symbolism reflects society's growing concerns about moral decay within the relentless drive for economic gain, resonating with a modern audience that continues to grapple with these age-old times. Belphegor's legacy endures as versatile and enigmatic today as it was centuries ago, continually reshaped by the hands of those who dare to invoke his tale. Which is interesting, considering how the characters of myth and legend can shape and reflect the values, fears, and aspirations of generations, including our own. I think that's enough, though. We've reached the end, and we've got to learn that he started off as an ancient deity called Baal Peor, and was transitioned from that to a notorious prince of hell. Belphegor's legacy is a symbol of sloth, and his curious role as a tempter through promises of innovation has left an indelible print on our collective storytelling. His grotesque iconography and famous roles in literature and pop culture reflect the fascination and fear that he's inspired over centuries. As we've witnessed, Belthegor is more than just a mythical figure. He's a complex symbol of human vices, societal flaws, and the ever-present struggle between morality and temptation. And I thank you for joining us. Have a great day.